Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you liked the last video where we already created our very first Node.js application. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, what I want to do in this video is give you some more fundamentals, JavaScript fundamentals for working with Node.js. No, I'm obviously not going to make a JavaScript course in this one video here. But there are especially two things that I want to explain because we'll use them a lot when working with Node.js and it's important to understand them. In the next video, we'll have a look at my IDE and what you can do in an IDE, especially in PHP Storm or WebStorm here in this case, to make working with Node as easy as possible. So I'm back in my workspace here and what I did is I just created a new file, the app.js file in a new folder. This folder structure is only due to the reason that I will upload the code to GitHub and there I will provide this folder structure so that it's very easy to well see the code of each, each video there. So in this app.js file I first want to demonstrate you the concept of modules modules in Node.js or in JavaScript here. Now, if you watched my Angular 2 video, you already know a bit about modules, but there we use TypeScript. Um, I want to show you how we use modules in Node.js with pure JavaScript. So in the last video, what we did is we created our Node.js server. To do this, we had to import or to require here the HTTP module. Now, this HTTP module is a core module of Node.js. That's why I don't have to provide any path here. Obviously, there is no HTTP file in this folder, as you can see. But it is yeah, a core module, which will automatically be loaded by Node.js. And what we're doing here in this very first line is we're importing it with this require statement here. And then we're basically binding it to a variable. And through this variable, we will then be able to access this module and everything which is exported in this module. So all the functions and variables which this module exposes to our module or to our application to work with. Therefore, we were able to call the HTTP create server function, which is basically such an exported function in this HTTP module. Now I'm just going to repeat the step of my first video where I create the server listening on port 8000. To make this easy, I'll just copy the code because for the time being, it'll be exactly identical. So now we're using this HTTP module. Now, can we also write our own modules? Sure, we can, because we want to structure our app such that we don't put all our code in one single file, but instead we'll split it over several files. Such a structure where we split our code is much more easy to work with. To demonstrate you how we write our own module, I'm going to create a new JavaScript file in the same directory and I will just call it module1.js. Inside this file, what I want to do is I'll create a function and I will call it my function. And what this function should do is it should just log something to the console function was called, for example. I'll also create a variable called my string, which will just say string. Now, if I want to access these, this function and this string in this file, I get no possibility to do, to do so. Now, to make that function and variable available outside of this file, I can use the modules object, which is automatically bound to this file, so to say. Each file will have its own module object, we can then use in other files, to export certain parts of this file that I want to be available in other files. I'll show you how to do this. At the bottom of this file here, I'll use the module object here, I call it, and there I use the exports property, so to say, the exports keyword here. And then I will just create or bind the my function to a my function object I created here, or property, so to say. So with this line here, I'm exporting this my function function, and I'm making it available in other files by binding it or setting it into my module object here, so to say. Can do the same with the string and with the variable here. Module exports my string can be, well, my string. 
By the way, here at the function, make sure you don't have the parentheses here. We don't want to execute it here, we just want to pass a reference. Now in my app.js file, right below my core module HTTP, I can import my own module by typing require, and then we're in the same directory, therefore I use dot slash to show that I don't want to navigate away. Here the module1.js file, and don't type .js, just module1 without the file ending. Now let me save this, and now to show that this works, I'm going to replace this hello world here with module1.mystring, and I also want to print out module one, or I want to execute my function here. Here I need the parentheses because now we're executing it. Now in order to see something, let me run this file here. And then here in the browser, we see the string, which is exactly the value I set to the variable we're exporting through this module. And here we can see the console function was called. Why do we see it two times? Well, because basically two requests are sent with each request, so to say, but we'll see this in a later video. So this is working and this is how we can use modules. Now, one thing is, this is a very tedious task if we have to export everything on our own, which we want to use, right? So let's, uh, let's use an easier way. I'll create a new file, module2.js, and in this file, I want to export everything, everything, every function, every variable, everything which lives inside this file. I can also do this with the module uh, object here and with the exports property, so to say. But then I just use a JavaScript object, set it equal to the JavaScript object, and now everything which I write inside this JavaScript object will be available in other files. Now obviously, as this is a JavaScript object, I have to make sure that if I export a function, I would do it like this, my function colon, and then just the function and then I can print out exported. And let's say I also want to export the variable here. So I will again have my variable and uh, with a colon, this could be exported variable. Let me just reformat that. Oops. Good. So now in app.js, I can again, we just duplicate, duplicate this and here I will import module two. And to show that this works, well, I'm just replacing module two here and module two here because I have my variable, variable and my function. And now let me rerun this file here. And um, this should be my variable I just recognized. So let me rerun it now. And now you can see we got two times exported here because this is what we're printing out when calling this function. And if we and if we have a look at the browser and reload here, we got exported variable. Yay! So this is working. And if you're wondering why now I have four times exported here in the console, that's just because I have two browser windows open here. You're only seeing one, so I sent two requests and therefore got this four prints. So this is how we use modules, how we can structure our application with several files and import and export the contents of these files. Now another very important thing that we use often, not only in Node.js but also in JavaScript, are anonymous functions. Now what is this? It's very simple basically, in our app.js, here we're calling this on request function or we're saying, hey, execute the on request function, but we don't have parentheses here. We're just setting the reference to the function which should be executed. And we could also use this function here, put it in here with or without this on request here, reform it a bit. And now this would be an anonymous function. We're not creating the function on its own, assigning it a name and then telling this function here to use that name, but instead, well, we're creating the function here at the place where we will need it. And we do this a lot, you will have seen it a lot also in the Angular 2 videos, but don't just be aware that this is just another concept of creating functions in the places where we need them instead of creating them, assigning a name, and so on, which you would do if you would reuse this function in several places, but in this case, it might be good to do it this way. But I think it's a little bit easier to read if I 
outsource this function, so to say. So I'll leave it this way. Okay, so this have been modules and anonymous functions. And obviously, I could tell a lot more about JavaScript basics, but that are some things that are really important for this course, I feel, and that is why I wanted to get them out of the way. In the next video, we'll have a look at the IDE, and then we will continue writing our applications. See you there. Bye.